Pastor Axel welcomes you to Evangel World Outreach Center. Our weekly worship services are every Sunday at 12.15 p.m. located at 236 Washington Street, Boonton, New Jersey 07005. We are a small church with a big vision for northern New Jersey. Come be a part of our family. I want to speak on the next... This Sunday, the next Sunday, I want to speak on Does Jesus Really Cares About You? Does Jesus Really Cares About You? Sometimes we think like He doesn't hear us. Sometimes we think like there's no one out there that understands us. Sometimes we think like we think like, right? In our mind, He is there, praise God. I can testify to you that God is alive. Amen. Because what I encountered physically, spiritually, emotionally, I know God is alive. I know there's somebody out there, his name is Jesus Christ. And he's sitting at the right hand of the Father in your seating for you. If you think nobody cares for you, understand that Jesus cried out unto the Father uh, in a much greater way than you cried out unto Jesus. You are on his mind. And in John 8, 30, uh, 36, it says, So if the Son sets you free, you're truly free. The relationship that we can have with Jesus that binds us together in love with Jesus Christ makes the Lord Jesus cares for us. The Lord Jesus even cares for non-believers. You know why? Because before they ever come to know him, he loves them. He's there for them. He's watching out for them. Sometimes you hear some unbelievers sharing a story of their life, how God was... They, didn't, they can't explain it was God, but it said something happened in my life and something changed. Because why? Because Jesus is going before people. He, Jesus is interacting with people long before they come into the relationship with the Father. Amen. Now I want, I, I want to read a scripture, our scripture text today. We find Mark 4, 36 to 41. Everybody, most of the people know that, that story very well. It says Mark 4, 36 to 41. Now, when they had left the multitude, they took him along in a boat as he was. And, a little, and, and other little boats were also with him. And a great windstorm arose. And the waves beat into the boat, so that he was already filling. But he was in the stern, asleep on a pillow. And they awoke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care what, that we are perishing? Then he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. But he said to them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said to one another, Who can this be? Then even the wind and the sea obey him. Father, we just thank you for your word. Holy Spirit, we ask you that you, you illuminate the word unto us. You enlighten us in a way where we understand more in depth what we hear. That what the words we hear will penetrate our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. We thank you that we can declare it all in the name of Jesus Christ and give you praise and glory and honor. Amen. It says here, now when the setting here was there was a multitude of people pushing Jesus and shoving Jesus. He just spoke to the people and, and Jesus wanted to retreat in the boat. He just wanted to get out and see when it's hot. In the Middle East it was hot, it was sticky, it was humid. So Jesus just wanted to get away from the people and just be a little isolated. So he stepped in the boat. He left them all to he stepped in the boat and they were just going out. Some little boats were around but I think they faded away from the boat Jesus was in. And all of a sudden, uh, an unannounced storm came in. All of a sudden, an unannounced, unannounced storm came in to swept over the waters. And sometimes in life, what happens? We have unexpected storm coming into our lives. We didn't ask for it. We didn't want it. We had no control over it. But it just came into our lives, praise God. But we know one thing, that when we trust in the Almighty Lord God Almighty, He is still in control over everything that happens in our life. He is the awesome perfection of our lives. There's nothing, nothing that can hinder that. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. And so the mighty great voice, windstorm arose, and the waves that were beating in the boat, 
And I don't know if they were ready for the storm, for the waves to come to the boat. I don't know if they come to pour, to, to enter the boat of water. See, in those days, the boats, they weren't made like today. Today, the boats are almost unsinkable because the, the outer shell, the boat is so formed and shaped and so tech, with the advantage technology that the boat can flip and it flips back around. But in those days, they had made boats of wood. And so the water go, goes into the boat. And what happens to the boat? The boat starts sinking. If you, put, if you put enough water into the boat, it's going to start sinking. And you think, you think in the midst of the storm, you think that somebody would be aware of what's going on, but the one that put their eyes on was sleeping. The one that, the, the one that could get us through the storm, he was sleeping. They may have thought, well, what is wrong with this Jesus? He heals the sick. He opens the eyes of the blind. He makes the lame to walk. He raises the dead to life. And yet we are in a boat and he misses the time of helping us out. I'll tell you one thing. Jesus is never late. Hallelujah. Maybe the doctor tells you something. Maybe your family tells you something. Maybe you hear a bad report. But I'll tell you. Jesus is never late. Hallelujah. He's always just right on time. Praise God. The only report you have to lean on and trust on and hear on is the report of the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't put your eyes on people. Don't put your eyes on the storm. Don't put your eyes on the problem. Because he cares for you. He will come and show up just in time. Hallelujah. So what happened here is they say, but he was in the stern asleep. And they woke him and said, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? I'll tell you one thing. You will never perish where Jesus is. You will never miss out where Jesus is. If you sit close to Jesus, there's no perishing. The little death in your birthday in the last day of your life will be maxed out for the cause of kingdom purpose. Amen. It is no devil, no demon, no problem. No situation, no sickness that can take you up before your time, praise God. And the time has been ordained by the Almighty God because where Jesus is, there's liberty. Where Jesus is, there's freedom. Where Jesus is, there's healing. Where Jesus is, there's salvation. Where Jesus is, there's a blessing. Hallelujah. So if you stick to Jesus, praise God, you can live your life to the fullness. And for his glory, your benefit will be great and tremendous. Then he rose and rebuked the wind and says, Peace, be still. When Jesus shows up, every sickness will leave your body. Every problem in the family will disappear. Every obstacle you have will come to an end. Every wall is built in front of you. People may want to build walls in front of you, but every wall will come crushing down because there's no power like the power of Jesus. Because the power of Jesus is the same Spirit of God that lives in us. The power of Jesus, the same Spirit of God that dwells in this world. The same Spirit of God is in this world and fulfilling the very purpose of the Father. And that's how we can click in and get connected with the Spirit of God. If you invite the Holy Spirit in our lives, say, Lord God Almighty, thank you for giving us your Spirit. His Spirit sets us free. Your Spirit that makes things happen. Your Spirit that makes things abundantly above all we can imagine or think. Because the power of God is in our lives. Hallelujah. You know what the Spirit of God is? It's the mind of God and the power of God. You don't need anything else because every problem in life will bow to the Spirit of God. Every problem in life will bow to the problem and situation in life. See, when Jesus rose up from the boat, I don't think he had to say, peace be still. He just said it to demonstrate that God, the, the, the power of the Holy Spirit in him. He didn't have to say anything. He just could look sternly at the water and the water would cease. Amen. But he says, peace be still for the sake of the people that were around him. And you know, when you have the power of God in your life, you have the ultimate freedom. Because the power of God will say to the things around you, you must cease, be still, you have no right to be in this life, you, can, you cannot come to that person, you can build no walls, the only walls are hedges of protection of prayer that you're going to have in your life. Hallelujah, I, never, I, I, I haven't gotten to the first point. 
Maybe we have to pick the first one next Sunday. So he rebuked the wind and said, Peace, be still. When was the last time that you said to your problem, be still? You, when was the last time you told your problem, be still? And you see the power of God in your problem. You need to speak to sickness. You need to speak to problems. Amen. Oh, those are controlled by the enemy. I'm not saying everybody sick, everybody has a, 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 a problem. It's caused by an enemy. It's, it's caused by not us living right. It's just the attack of the enemy. But you can speak to the problem. Amen. You can say, oh, I'm a son of God. I'm a daughter of God. I tell you, be still in the name of Jesus. See if exist no more and they will disappear. You know why? Because you are the sons and daughters of God. And everything Jesus has, everything he demonstrated on earth, everything he lived for, he has given to you to demonstrate the power of God into the world. Amen. He raised you up. He put you in a family. He raised you up to be a mighty power in this world. A power not directed by your own power, but a power that's been directed from on high in a far greater way you can ever produce. And I want to tell you today, the same words we find in verse 40. But it said to them, why are you so fearful? Why are we so fearful when we, when we face things? Why are we adopt-casted when we don't see the end of the tunnel? Why are we so turmoil and so confused and so troubled when something comes in our life? God has raised you above circumstances. God has lifted you above the situations of life. God has raised you above the authorities on earth. God has raised you up above the employers that you have. Maybe some faith to million employers. He raised you above. Amen. You will see a change in your workplace. You pray. You walk in the power of the Almighty God. You walk in and you say, God, I'm walking today. And that's not me walking in, but it's your power walking in. I release it into every area of my place here at work. And you have to, and you perform, and you do what you need to do. You touch your people's lives. You move and you have your way into people's lives. Lord, the one that come against me, they don't come against me. They come against the Almighty God. And I'm, I have to, I don't deal with it. Walk in the authority God has given you. Tell the prophets what to do. And where to go? You have the authority. He says, why are you so fearful? Why are you fearful when you hear a bad report? Why are you fearful when trouble comes to your life? Why are you fearful when there's a problem arising that you can't have no control over it? Why are you fearful? Do you trust in the problem? Or do you trust in the Lord? How is it that you have no faith? Faith is something you see already completed before you get there. Let us walk in faith. Let us be in a way where we can be really used by God. That faith will increase. See, faith has been activated in every believer's life. Now you, you activate it. It has, it, has, it has been activated. Now you exercise it. You speak to a problem. And see, the thing about faith is when we believe something and we don't see it right away, what happens? Most people say, well, it wasn't God's will. Maybe it wasn't meant for me. Maybe, maybe. No, you go in faith and you tell exactly to them what is bothering you in life. You speak to it. And you don't focus on it anymore. You start praising God. If you have a problem, you can say, oh, God Almighty, I thank you. For I'm your son, I'm your daughter, I'm your child. And I speak to the problem. And from this day forward, I thank you. I thank you, oh, God, I thank you. There's a man who shared something with me. And I, 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 I you know, something dear to his heart. Something he really wants to see happen in his lifetime. And I say, God, uh, I say, let's pray together. And from the day we pray together, I say, praise God for you. I'm going to make it happen. You're going to make it happen. I pray for acceleration. I know we're going to make it happen because we are your children. We can come up before you. And if it's something that has to do with kingdom purpose, it promotes the kingdom of God, I know that you're going to be working it and you're going to make it happen. Amen. 
Because God wants to make things happen in your life. He gave the ultimate freedom. He, gave, he exposed his kingdom unto you. He gave everything he had. So walk in it. Walk with the authority. Walk with the authority of God. And then they said here, they said to one another, who can this be that even the wind and the sea obey him? I wish, not pray, I wish, not pray, not believe that every Christian will rise to a new standard. I believe, not pray, and I started praying a while back, that every Christian will operate a supernatural. That every Christian can come before someone on the street and tell them exactly what is the root of their evil thing. And tell them exactly how to get rid of it. I pray that you will lay hands on the sick and that shall be well. Amen. Oh, don't trust in you. Trust in the source that's in you. The power of the Holy Spirit wants to make things happen. Amen. The time we're living in is short. We're running out of time. But while we have still time, let us do what God wants us to do to impact this world for his kingdom. He wants to. He's looking for people. He has given you freedom over every sin. He has given you freedom over every situation. He has given you freedom over every problem. He has given you freedom over every sickness. He has given you freedom over every curse. He has given you freedom over everything that binds you down and holds you back. He has given you freedom. Why has he given you freedom? That you can nourish and grow and advance in kingdom business. He has given you freedom just to make it for me the glory. He has given you freedom to impact your neighborhoods, your families, your Judeas, your Samarias, to the end of the world. Go with it. Go with it. Because Jesus really cares about you. Jesus really cares about you. Jesus wants to glorify himself in your life. Do you let Jesus do you, do you allow Jesus to glorify himself in your life? Or are you holding back? When he speaks to you, listen and obey. It's better if you listen and obey and make a mistake and it wasn't the Lord speaking to you. Then you find out the other way around. That he's speaking to you, not listening, and you're not obeying. Let us find in our ears. God has given us everything. And greater. I'm preparing a message. Maybe the next few weeks. That will show us what heaven is all about. Heaven. If you could see heaven. Our life would be transformed. Our things would be transformed. Our priorities would be rearranged. If you could see heaven. We wouldn't worry about the things of life. We wouldn't care about the things that go on in our lives. The only focus we would have, how can we bring greater glory to the Father? Hallelujah. Let us stand. Thank you for listening to this week's sermon. Please check our website for church updates and notes on upcoming sermons. Have a blessed week.